Welcome back to RetroAxis. This is my ZX Spectrum, and it's not really running Commodore 64 Basic. This is a little Easter egg I found in a game called Colony. In fact, when I press the, uh, the space bar, it returns me back to the start screen. Needless to say, I've been very busy uh, experimenting with the ZX Spectrum, and on this episode, I'm gonna take you through uh, some of the upgrades that I've put onto the machine, and we'll take a look at a couple of the different games of which I've uh, come to enjoy. So stay tuned, and let's get started. As I've been exploring the ZX Spectrum, I've really tried to, you know, get to know the system unmodified. And as I've learned very rapidly, using cassette tapes is excruciating. It takes forever to load and, you know, cassette tapes themselves are prone to failure. Um, and so I've had a lot of um, time to really look at options and I came across the Div MMC Enjoy from Byte Delight. And I was able to order one of these and get it shipped. And um, the gentleman named Ben, who actually is one of the developers, also makes something called the ZXHD. And this also uh, plugs in. These two items actually daisy chain together and plug into the expansion slot on my Plus 2. It now gives me the ability to have a high definition output using HDMI directly into the monitor, but also gives me a menu where I can essentially load directly off of an SD card. So programs now load instantaneously. So being able to do this has given me an opportunity to truly enjoy the system, explore things more quickly, and, and really get a feel for what it was like to run and own a ZX Spectrum. And I've enjoyed it quite a bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a quick look um, at this interface. Uh, I'll show you a bit about also the differences between the joystick port that I built, uh, which is more of an adapter for wires, versus what's provided here on the actual Div MMC. Um, and I'll talk to you a bit also about what a Kempston joystick is. So hang on real quick and we'll dive in and take a look. In the last episode, I built this joystick adapter box, which allowed me to plug a Atari joystick into a Sinclair computer joystick port without modifying either the computer or the joystick. This was just a simple realignment of pins, really nothing special. I found out that there's something called a Kempston joystick interface, which plugged into the back of ZX Spectrum computers. And this allowed you to use Atari joysticks natively on the Spectrum. And there's a lot of games that actually, when you're prompted for joystick support, will ask you whether you want a Sinclair joystick or a Kempston joystick. So up close, this is my ZX Spectrum Plus 2B. Um, and as you can see, here's the built-in tape deck, which of course you, you would normally use to load. Um, and then of course, plugged into the expansion slot back here is the, is the ZX HD. And then as you can see, it's, it's connected also into uh, the Div MMC. So the Div MMC plugs into the back of the ZX HD. You'll note here that there are two joystick ports. Um, One's already plugged in, which I actually have my, my slick stick over here is plugged into, and this is an Atari uh, pin joystick from Suncom. Uh, and it also has two buttons, a blue button and a red button. The red button acts as a reset switch, which actually this way you don't have to use the switch that's provided on the Sinclair. And the blue button allows you to instantaneously jump into the menu anytime it's pressed. And you can also see here on the side, the SD card uh, sticking out. So let's take a look at the menu. So I booted up my ZX Spectrum Plus 2B, and as you can see, it's loaded to a screen that is actually missing the normal boot up screen. And that's okay, because what I can do is on the back of the, um, the Div MMC, I'll press the blue button and that will load the menu. And you can see here, I've got a, uh, a folder uh, that I've called Taps. And in the Taps folder, um, I've actually copied a bunch of ROMs and organized them by alphabet. So obviously you can name this whatever you like or sort them however you like, keeping in mind that this is a DOS-based operating system and it does actually limit uh, you to the eight characters um, as, a, as a DOS operating system typically does. So you don't get to see the full file name. So it might actually help you to rename some of these if you're curious what they are. So pressing enter, you can see that immediate load, no wait times for the tape. And essentially it's just almost like it shoved it right into memory and fired it up. So taking a look, one thing I do want to point out, if you look closely, you'll see where uh, the game is actually asking me to select an option. And you'll notice that by default, you know, keyboard is selected, but notice here option two for Kempston. That's that joystick port that I had talked about earlier in the episode. 
You'll also note that there is a uh, couple other uh, joystick types, one called cursor, and here's a Sinclair style joystick, or option five lets you redefine your keys. I'm gonna select Kempston here uh, for my joystick, and you note that the arrow has changed. Uh, and so let's give this one a shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit zero to begin the game. Uh, so I am actually using uh, my slick stick here, uh, and I'm gonna launch the ship. And so you can see here um, that I'm now controlling and instantly died. <laughs> Uh, I'm actually controlling this ship, and so uh, this is actually a fun little game which I've, I've come across called Agent Orange. Um, it's it's pretty neat. It's 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 essentially a sideways uh, scroller shooting game. Um, I haven't exactly discovered the full uh, plot of the game, but just in experimenting with it, it, it's been a lot of fun just to check it out. I can also go left. I'm collecting a capsule after I destroy this other ship. Uh, really fun game. So Agent Orange, definitely take a look at this particular game. So here's a game called Jason's Gem, and I think what's what's interesting about some of these old games is a lot of times the storylines that they give you, they're very short and to the point, and, and I, I think this one certainly is, is one that demonstrates that. Here we go, now we're gonna figure out what to do with Jason, so uh, let's go ahead and play this game. Whoops. So we're gonna try and land on this particular, there we go, perfect landing. And so here we're gonna navigate this little area, clear a little space for our ship. Oops, didn't make it, whoops. Bonus. So pretty simple game, but you know, actually it's, it's a bit of fun. So uh, check out Jason's Gem. So this next game is called Chronos Tapestry of Time. And the first thing I really liked about this game uh, was the music. Let's take a listen. For a ZX Spectrum game, I mean, that really is some pretty good music. I mean, all things considered, um, you know, considering that the sound on this system was mono, that's a really impressive, <laughs> impressive song. So really like that. The gameplay is also really great. So let's select Kempston and we'll start the game up. And this is a Gradius style game. So um, it, it, it's a nice little shooter. It's a lot of fun. Um, I, I enjoy playing it. Um, it's got some maze aspects to it where you can go different ways around the level um, you can actually get stuck if you go the wrong way and lose a life but tremendously fun to play um, definitely recommend checking this one out chronos So those were a few games that I thought I might show you in today's episode. There's plenty more for me to explore and I haven't actually even barely scratched the surface of all the games that are out there. Looking at World of Spectrum, which is a website resource uh, which has all kinds of ROMs and information about the ZX Spectrum, there is just a large library of software available for this platform. So I do plan to explore not just games, but also maybe some office suites, word processors, databases, spreadsheets, see what those were like and also um, take a look at maybe some programming topics on the ZX Spectrum as well. So stay tuned for those and we'll explore those in an upcoming episode. So that's it for the games for today. I just wanna quickly recap my experience with Byte Delight. Overall, the ordering experience was straightforward. The shipping was easy. I communicated with Ben back and forth about the shipping and tracking. He was very responsive, extremely helpful, wonderful experience working with them, highly recommend it. Regarding the hardware itself, um, the ZX Spectrum HD or the ZX HD interface provides an amazing picture quality. I do have the RGB to SCART cable as well, which is very high quality. And I talked a bit about that last time from RetroShack. 
and that's a great cable, but I will say that the HDMI provides just a little bit richer picture that I think you'll really appreciate. Also, the Div MMC Enjoy. Um, being able to load games from an SD card uh, provides not only convenience, but speed. And the speed is a huge difference for you as a ZX Spectrum owner. And if you're looking for the best possible way to load games, store games, and to really you know, keep your collection, the, the Div MMC provides that for you. So if you haven't checked that out, please do so. Also note that the guys from Bite the Light have a shop called ZX or ZX Spectrum dot shop, uh, where they have all kinds of additional hardware that's available um, for ZX Spectrum owners and collectors. So um, if you like that, also don't forget to check us out at www.retroaxis.info, where I will continually post more information about uh, the episodes that you've seen, and also additional content for download that will uh, be supporting files for today's episode. So don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and post comments for us in the, in the bottom down below. And we'll see you next time on Retro Access. Thank you.